Good morning and welcome back to the Now Morning Show, your Wednesday edition. I Inka Will here with you and we're getting straight to the topic of the UWI as it is ranked among the top 1% of universities globally by Times Higher Education. And the St. Augustine campus is accepting applications for programs starting in 2022-2023's academic year. They are looking for the next cohort of game-changing students. To tell us more about the application, or at least before it closes on July 31st, 2022, Dr. Justin Ku, who is the Deputy Dean Lecturer in Law, joins us here and now. Good morning, Dr. Ku. Hi, morning. Thanks for having me. A pleasure. We are thrilled to have you, simply because the UWI is one of the emblems, if you will, of not just Trinidad and Tobago, but the region. So we are getting ready for our bumper semester coming up. And while we wonder, what can students expect in September? Well, I mean, in September, I think the big thing, the big talk is that we'll be returning to campus in person. Right. Um, so students can expect to actually come back physically to the campus. The last two years we've been away. Um, so that's, I guess for some people that might have been an advantage, for others that might have been a disappointment. Um, right. But for September, we can expect to return to campus. Now, usually there is a uh, freshers week and all of those sorts of excitement, activ exciting, sorry, activities that take place. Will we see a return of those? I think we will see some return to a sense of normalcy in that sense. I mean, of course, all COVID-19 protocols will be observed on campus. Uh, the, I will say the club have continued to operate and run even during the pandemic of course you might not have been able to physically go on the football pitch or the cricket right. pitch etc at times um, but where possible and within the the covid regulations we will have some some uh, physical operations going on in, in in the freshest week that sort of sense sounds good and in terms of applying we want to know what exactly do we need to do what is the process where do we start Right, so the starting point for the application process is to go onto the website, uh, the UE website, uh, the forward slash apply. Uh, when you find the application form there, I think the key here is really to understand and to know what it is you want to apply for. So which programs you want to apply for. So getting into a little bit of the academics, um, I believe you're allowed to apply up to five or six different uh, programs. Uh, so you need to figure out which one is your first choice. Um, of course, if you're going to be choosing medicine, law, engineering, that would need to be your first choice for the most part, um, because those faculties are always the ones that are oversubscribed. Um, so it's really just to know what you want to apply for and then figuring out whether you have the requisite qualifications to apply for those programs. When we talk about being oversubscribed, uh, specifically in the sciences faculty, could you give me an estimate of numbers? Um, okay, so in terms of hard numbers, I, I can only speak for faculty of law because that's the faculty that I am at. Um, so we admit 150 to 160 students every year. Um, if you don't make that number, the possibility is that you can be put on a wait list for the following year, uh, but it's very competitive. We receive over 400, uh, 500, 600 applicants. So it's very competitive to get into the faculty of law. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And that's because we churn out quite a few thousand graduates every semester or so, so I could totally understand that. Uh, tell me a little bit more about the process of application, continuing more, more specifically with the services that the campuses have put in place to support students, because we now have to look at perhaps digital versions of things that were otherwise done in person, I imagine. Tell me a little bit more about how things have evolved. Yeah, so the submission of documents is all done online um, everything is digital so pdfs um, that sort of thing being uploaded by students uh, there's an online submission portal um, it's been tried and tested for the last two years so we know it's functional and it's working all i will say is that of course thousands of persons are applying for the different faculties um, so please do have some patience and you submit your documents and you don't get an immediate notice mm. um, so if you can Follow. there's normally a checklist option available online so you can see all the documents that you need. Um, do ensure that you submit to the right place and that all of your documents are submitted on time um, and note that it will take a little bit of processing because of the sheer volume of, of applications. Right, so there is no instantaneous uh, automated response once you supply those documents. It is an actual manual process thereafter? It will normally indicate that it, the document was submitted um, but in terms of getting a formal response to your application, it may take some processing time. 
Understood. Now, what about those of us who are not tech savvy or just don't have access to that sort of technology right away? You, there is a time frame for the application. So is there an alternative option with, when applying to perhaps manually drop off documents in envelopes or take names the old way, so to speak? Right. So um, we have lots of helpful staff at the, uh, with the applications committee or applications crew that handles the applications. Feel free to reach out to them. There is a chat with us option on the website, so feel free to use that. Um, there are also persons who will be identified on the website that you can call or email for further information or further assistance. So if you do have uh, technological challenges or you have a lack of access to technological media, uh, you know there, there are options that will be put in place for you. So feel free to reach out to those individuals. Um, so of course, the old-fashioned phone and email uh, will work in that sense. Now, where, where can we get the access uh, portals, numbers, those sorts of specifics on the main UE site? Yeah, itself? so all, all all of that information is on the main UE website. And again, if you follow the the, the link, the forward slash uh, UE apply, um, you will find that information there. Right. Getting into the programs now, because as you mentioned, there are quite a few. Are there any new programs added to the uh, UE's uh, repertoire of sorts? <laughs> Yeah, so I will talk about the Faculty of Law again, as I'm most knowledgeable about this, as I would in the Faculty of Law. So we've recently launched an uh, LLM in oil and gas law. So this okay. is very topical for us in Trinidad and Tobago. It's also very, very topical for those who are in Guyana. So, of course, this is an up and coming field, and we're always constantly working on introducing new courses that uh, will keep us trendy, will keep us topical and keep us competitive on the international scene. So at the undergraduate level, the LLB level, we've introduced new courses like sports law, entertainment law, noting that of course the Caribbean has a lot of athletes. We have a lot of entertainers, you know, comedians, soccer performers, that sort of thing. So yes, we teach you traditional areas of law like criminal law, land law, et cetera. Um, but it's also very important that we stay abreast of, you know, developments in the region as well, mm -hmm. training out lawyers that they're able to assist the persons in society Mm -hmm. and help those persons to, to get further ahead. So, um, you know, with introducing new courses all the time, we currently have a slew of new courses uh, being uh, proposed. So hopefully those will come out for September. Uh, but our hallmark is really the oil and gas pathway, um, especially our Dean, Dean Raphael Heffron. He's an expert in the oil and gas area um, and energy more generally. Um, so we're looking to doing exciting new projects in the oil, gas and energy area. Sounds fantastic. And I imagine a long time coming. Now, as far as the, appli appl hmm, the application to you, Ego is, we have a fresh batch of students currently setting exams, and they might need a little guidance on uh, uh, when to apply, how to apply, what sort of programs to apply for. So just to give them a little insight, perhaps on the first step, if you're looking for a program, what should they do? Right. So the first thing to bear in mind is that the deadline is July 31st. You need to get your documents and your application in before then. Um, in terms of applying, I would, you know, say and use my personal experience that it's always good to apply to a university program that you feel that you are interested in. It's not always just about what do I do to get a job um, mm -hmm. that could lead you down to a very miserable road. So I think you need to take an inward look. And it's okay if you don't know specifically what you want to do for the rest of your life. That's fine. I was in that position when I was, you know, 17, 18 years old applying to university. Um, so it's okay not to know. But think about what you enjoy. Think about what you're doing in school. If you like something in particular, then perhaps consider doing that further at the tertiary level. So I think in order to figure out what you want to do, it's really just to explore as much as possible in high school, do different things. Um, you know, think about what you enjoyed in high school from the subjects you chose, what you didn't enjoy. And then see how that aligns with whatever career path you're thinking as being uh, useful for you or being uh, relevant to you. Um, of course, if you want to do things like medical sciences, then there's a, a core set of subjects that you'd have to do in the sciences. Um, if you're doing law, for example, there's no core set of subjects. You can do anything, sciences, business, uh, languages, modern studies. Um, I personally did modern studies before applying to law. Um, so it really doesn't matter what you do for law. Uh, it's really just the case that you have to do well in, in the exams at Form 6 or equivalent. Right. Well, Dr. Ku, I think you've given us enough food for thought, enough information to make those decisions and to start that application process to meet or beat that July 31st deadline. Tell me, though, if we wanted to get more help, more access, remind us of those websites, those numbers and the contacts for the UWI, please. 
Yeah, so all of the information is available on the UV St. Augustine website. And again, it's the base UV St. Augustine. If you just Google uh, UV St. Augustine, it comes up. Um, or if you Google UV St. Augustine apply, it will come up. The actual hyperlink is the forward slash apply, um, and that will come up. So uh, just look, it's all over our, our homepage. The apply buttons are there. Look for the information on the website. Or everything you need is right there in front of you, one click away. And in that case, that's all we needed to hear. We're going to head to our desktops, our laptops, and our tablets right now and get ready to become a part of the UWI in the next semester. Let me say thank you very much for joining us, albeit virtually this morning, Dr. Koo. <laughs> and best of luck with the upcoming semester and the large influx of student applications you're about to receive. <laughs> Great. Thank you. Thanks for having me. My pleasure. Now, of course, you guys, you can look for the UWI online, start applying, and stick around for some more advice here on the Now Morning Show on what you can do to structure your future. We will be back with even more. I'd rather walk away.